Hey what's up guys, today we're taking a look at my Mosin again Airsoft uh, replica With a nice wooden stock And I've put a Repro sling on there, so that's a fake Sling, but it's made in the same style as the original ones That does not come with this weapon um, Yeah, and today we're gonna take this thing apart and it's going to be a disassembly video similar to my uh, Specna uh, Arms Sniper disassembly. This one is also spring action, so um, it doesn't need any gas, like CO2 or green gas. Um, it's simply and then it's good to go. Um, there is a green gas and CO2 version of this from the same manufacturer. Um, and there's also, uh, of these three varieties, there's also a scoped version. So these are the six different varieties of this gun that are out there. The body is entirely made of real wood, so that's really, really nice. The exterior parts are all metal. Um, goes for the receiver, uh, like the internal magazine, the trigger, the trigger guard. Uh, like everything you see is metal. Internally, it does have uh, quite a bit of plastic, but we'll get to that when we start disassembling this thing. Now, first things first, I'm gonna have to loosen up the front sling uh, here because we're gonna need to remove these two. Uh, oh, it's quite a problem because it's quite long. <laughs> we need to remove these black rubber, uh, steel bands that go around the gun that hold the wood together. Um, these clamps, but to do to slide them off, I need to remove my sling. So yeah, for those wondering how long this thing is, it's a hundred and twenty-four centimeters. So it's pretty close to the original length. Let me take the sling off like that, and that is without bayonet. With bayonet this thing comes in at um, 170 centimeters, just shy of it. Um, and it's just as tall as I am, so it's really, really long. It does come with a pl plastic bayonet, which you can mount up on the front. Um, I don't have that one right here, but I can show you the real steel one, because I actually have a real bayonet and a nice carrying uh, piece for it. A nice leather sheet which you can put on your belt because uh, running around with a uh, 1 meter 70 centimeter rifle is quite uh, <laughs> quite a thing to do it's not very handy um, so it has a quite an easy system for attaching and detaching let me see let me get it up close focus my little camera so basically you slide it in here from the front this the side will be uh, up top of course and when you get it far enough to the front, it, the, your sight will push this button in and you will slide it to the side and then your sight will be in here and as you can see this sticks out so it can't rotate back and slide back off so the uh, bayonet will be mounted and only by pushing this in you can slide it back up and out of the gun again. So that's how you mount it. The plastic one looks pretty much the same uh, like this one but it's made of plastic and not steel of course. Um, but yeah, this is the real one, and that one does actually fit on this airsoft version. Now, push it in. That's the problem with this uh, airsoft version. The side that, uh, on the barrel can move, so like the entire barrel can turn around. Uh, so I'm gonna have to hold it in place and then turn the bayonet and then it has locked itself in place as you can see there I hope you can see that actually it's quite hard to see for me on the camera if you can see that um, but yeah, that's the bayonet's on there, it's on the side as you can see it's not uh, sticking side of the barrel so you'll shoot in this line and your bayonet will be to the right of that I'm gonna take the bayonet off before I stab the wall because this thing is already long enough. <laughs> but 
yeah, that's one of, one of the main complaints for me about this rifle is the fact that this is uh, loose so it can turn, so it won't come off. Uh, like the side did break off for me, so this is not the original uh, side where the way it would look like. It would have a small pin in here that comes to about halfway and you would look over that. Um, I've got a screw going in all the way from the top into the outer barrel um, because the side broke off during shipping when I got this thing because it's very very fragile um, so yeah I had to do that so I imagine if you put the bayonet on you will easily break that thing off now as I said we're gonna disassemble this thing um, and we're gonna get these screens off the tools we're gonna need today is a small Phillips head a one and a half millimeter hex key a two millimeter hex key and you could use the flat hat that comes on your bayonet so the point is a actual a flat hat a flat hat or you could use a regular flat hat screwdriver so first we use the 1.5 millimeter hex key to remove the grip screws on the bottom in these rings I wouldn't get them out all the way because you can really easily lose them. They're really, really small. Just get them loose enough that they the rings can move. Now the real gun won't have that. They will have screws on the side, which uh, are on these cl which clamp these rings together. Uh, but this one sadly doesn't have that. Now to slide them off, they are still kind of locked in place. Oh, I need to loosen this one a little bit more. They are still locked in place with these metal pins, which is literally uh, just a metal plate that goes on and that has a little fold on it, uh, and which therefore spring loads it upwards, push it down, and then you can slide it over. Same thing for this one, and then also get the other one over it, and then slide both of them to the front of the rifle. Let me see, I need to loosen the keys a little bit more, or the grip screws a little bit more. Like that. That's, yep, there you go. You can't slide them off because the side is in the way. Now, we can take the top wooden part off, as you can see, this part. And we can take the cleaning rod out. Now we need to work our way to the back of the rifle. And we're gonna loosen this part. Uh, let's see. It's a lot easier if you have a tool for it uh, that sticks in these boat holes and then you can turn it. But what I just do is um, grab the two millimeter flu. Fl 2mm flathead or the 1.5mm flathead, if you have a nice screwdriver like me, put it in one of the holes and then push uh, against it so it turns. When it's a little bit looser, I just turn it by hand so I don't scratch uh, anything or or break like my tools or stuff. <laughs> This little ring comes off and the bolt comes out from the other side. Now, this thing is attached with two more screws um, and similarly to my uh, Spekna arms disassembly, if you have seen that, they are located here and here. Um, the only difference is this one is facing upwards, the other one is coming in from the bottom, so oh, like the top, which is now the bottom. Uh, so we're gonna have to take the safety off as well in order to get that out. First, let's take this one off. That's the nice thing about that bayonet. <laughs> there we go. Turn it around. And there 
there we have a little screw. Now, to take the other one off, we first have to remove our safety. There's a screw in the back of the safety, a flathead, which we simply have to turn. Be careful removing that thing because there's a little ball and a little spring in there. Just like with my Spectre Arms one, and you don't want to lose that. Because that is kind of what makes it satisfying to turn the uh, safety knob, and which gives a bit of feedback. It's not necessary, so if you lose it, the rifle will still work, but um, yeah, it just it feels a lot better. As you can see, uh, as I hope you can see, zoom you in. Hold it more here. Yeah, that's where the little ball is, and there's a little spring under that. Don't lose it. Um, as you can see, by the way, the safety is uh, like not made like the real one. The real one would have a flat part here, which is cut out, so that you can actually uh, slide it over these parts here, or either of them. So you lock the safety in. Uh, so the safety on this one doesn't actually work like the real one. So that's kind of a shame. But yeah, with that off, we can access the screw on the back here. Now the bottom part, so the internal magazine, the trigger guard and stuff are spring loaded in here, so it will come out really easily. There we go. And there we can see the plastic starting to come because this the metal on the outside is all it's all metal, but this internals is all plastic. The wooden part comes off now. So we have the entire wooden body off. Mm -mm. Put that down, and we now have this part with the barrel. Now to get the outer barrel off, you would have to remove. Um, let me turn it around. Flip the side up, the front side, or like the back side. Sorry, uh, and then we need a one and a half millimeter hex key again. And remove a little hex key here and we could take the entire outer barrel out so not the inner barrel unlike the Spectre arms one uh, oh shit uh, it does not take both barrels off just the outer barrel be careful because you don't want to bend the inner barrel and as you can see that's that's him him of uh, all three um, a problem with this one is this part can also turn so like it's not fixed to it um, and that also makes that the the sights on this thing are pretty much shit like get the scoped version I sadly don't have the scoped version yet but I plan on getting it because this thing is uh, pretty shit for shooting because it's like this part in moves uh, and in the wood a wooden stock it's not fixed either so this can move a little bit, so this will pretty quickly be off center. And then the front side is also, uh, as I showed you when it was in the rifle, could still turn. So, really easily, either of these two or both of them will be offset and you won't be shooting straight where you're aiming. So, yeah, the sights on this thing, on this airsoft version, are shit. Not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna put this outer barrel back on because. Uh, I'm not going to take the barrel out of this one anyway. I just wanted to show you that, that you could take it off like this. Slide this in. Uh, the next part of the disassembly that I will be showing you is the internal magazine. And this is the part that you're most likely uh, going to need to get at. Because this thing, oh boy. Um, Though I like that they have an internal magazine, so you can't never lose it. Uh, just like the real one, which had an internal magazine, the real rifle, of course. Uh, for BBs, oh boy, this is shit, because this is a high cap. You have to turn this wheel on the bottom here. 
and turning that wheel is not very comfortable for your finger. The first couple of times it's not that bad, but if you do this all day shooting this thing, uh, you've only got a 15 round magazine, by the way, 15 BBs, 15 shots you can take, and then you need to reload this thing again. Um, and unlike a high cap in like uh, the normal sense, you can't turn this, oh, like halfway there. No, you always have to turn this wheel the entire way, otherwise this thing will uh, like jam up the, the little rope part that, that you charge by turning this wheel will get stuck on the sides of it and you won't be able to shoot any again. So to take this part off, we simply remove these two pins here and two screws here. And we need our two millimeter hex key for this. There we go. That's that part. And that's why we needed a small Phillips head. Now this you probably don't have to take further apart than this. Um, unless something really drastic happens, but I really doubt that. Uh, replacing the spring on this thing is not that easy as on the Spectre Arms one. You would have to take this entire thing apart. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video. What I really wanted to show you here is the dis how to get to this magazine and um, disassembling this magazine. Because this is the part that will fuck you over with this rifle aside from the sights. So, as I told you, it's a high cap. You turn the wheel. Pour your BBs up in the front, um, and basically this, uh, we can see a little plastic piece here. It's uh, it's, it's on a um, spring. It goes all the way through here with a little rope that pulls it back when you turn the wheel. So you pull it, and you have to pull it all the way, otherwise you can't feed BBs into it because it has to be far enough to the back that the BBs can slide in here, and then into here, and then when you release, you can fill it up to the BBs till they are just before that hole. And you release it when you clamp, when you close your magazine cover. It releases this pin, which unlocks uh, the wheel from turning. Um, and then it turns and it pushes with that spring and this little plastic knob. It will push the BBs upwards into the chamber and the rifle itself. Um, now. As I said, it has a lot of problems. Let's open it so you can see a little better what I mean. Be careful because everything in here is spring loaded, as I said. So you can really easily lose parts. There it comes out again. So basically, here we have it in the open, let me zoom you in, let me get this out of the way. We have a little turning wheel, this thing comes over here, sits in there, all the way up with this plastic piece like this, um, it's kind of hard to show you uh, like this on the back. So the rope goes from here all the way through here to the plastic piece up front. When you turn the wheel, the rope gets stuck around it, of course. So the rope pulls this plastic piece to, towards it. And while the spring is in there, it gets compressed. It's kind of hard to show you that uh, because the spring shoots out, of course. But that's basically what happens. This little part stops your wheel from going backwards. So when you turn it, as you can see, it's easy to lift it but it's, it won't shoot back due to these little hooks. It hooks on there, so it can't go back. When you close the magazine cover, this thing gets pushed down and this wheel starts to release because it comes back. Now, your BBs are fed in from this hole. So when the spring is compressed, 
the plastic part needs to be before this. So take a good look at this spring again. And that plastic part, this long spring has to be all the way here. And then a little bit further back to let this plastic piece uh, give way and make space so that the BBs can go in here. So it has to be pretty compressed to do this. So turning this um, uh, like will be uh, will require a bit of force, and because they have this annoying teeth, which are meant uh, necessary to hold it back, like the, the <laughs> your thumb will get like really sore from turning that a lot. So what happens if you don't turn it all the way? Quite easily, this rope shoots uh, when it's not fully tight because then the uh, compression isn't perfect. It's too loose and it can shoot out of its way and either like this, which is not that big of a problem when it shoots off this wheel. But when it is a problem is that it shoots quite easily to the side of this plastic wheel in which you turn it. Uh, and when it's in the side here, so like between the uh, plastic uh, plating and the wheel, you can never spin it fully far enough that you can load this thing and it gets stuck really easily um, and you have to take it entirely apart like I did right now to put it back together again and to unjam it. So basically this renders your rifle useless when this happens which is kind of a big problem um, and which I'm kind of salty that they made this of plastic uh, and with such bad tolerances because there's quite a gap next to this plastic wheel when it's all closed. Now to close it back up again, it's luckily it's not that difficult. We simply lay the spring in here. Make sure the plastic piece is before the end because there's a little. Uh, this end is a little uh, smaller so that this plastic piece can't shoot out too far. Oh shoot! This is the spring that holds uh, this plastic back thing back. By the way, the. Uh, that was in the other plastic plate. Uh, oh god, and it's pushed it upwards already. So hold it all down. <laughs> That's the main key. Hold it all down. Try to hold it all perfectly down. Make sure the spring's in there. Simply push on it, and then push this plastic piece into its correct position so put the screws back in quick and I hope we don't lose haven't lost too much pressure that things have gotten out of their way so as you can see it's quite a delicate to put together and quite hard to show you because I have to keep pressure on my hands constantly. Um, another reason why I don't like that is all plastic because the chance of this breaking, oh boy. And it doesn't even feel like those super durable plastics or anything so um, hmm. really in depth on how long this is gonna last. But anyway, we've got our turning wheel, we turn that, in there you see a little red wire, oh of course it's not going to focus anymore, come on, yeah, the red wire, let's see is it far enough, I think it is, there's also something, you're going to have to try and see if it's all the way um, rotated this high cap on the battlefield so <laughs> because you can't take it out or anything so yeah it's far enough back as you can see you can see the bottom of the plastic and not the pin and then when you close the cover this thing would loosen up again as you can see look at the wheel gonna turn here and then you would see a spring if you look into that hole. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. 
I'm not sure if you see that, but there's a little spring and a little red rope in there. So you wouldn't be able to fit any BBs in. And the plastic part sticks out on top of the front here again. So, to put this thing back on the rifle, when you had your jam, you fixed your jam, uh, it's time to put it back on the rifle. So we put it back on here. It's not too bad. It's simply these two screws again and then the bridge to reattach it. Let me close my rear sight. <laughs> this is by the way how you feed the BBs. You simply push them in there with the front of your uh, bolt. Anyway, position this correctly. Like that. Now we come to the side, grab our screw, and then like me, don't drop it. And we get them into this plate, screwed back into the magazine again. A little looser. This one's a little tighter. Yum. Perfect. Um, this one I had reattached, so like the outer barrel. So that's all together again. Now we simply have to put it back into the wooden part of the rifle. Wooden body, plastic body, <laughs> uh, oh, almost forgot, Jesus Christ, the bridge that I said, we also have to put that one back. To make sure the magazine is in place and to this you also mount the bottom, so like your internal magazine cover and your trigger guard and trigger. Like that. This thing, I mean. Body. Lay it in there. Try to rotate and center the rear side a little bit. And then mount it down with that little grip screw. I hadn't fully tightened that so I could still rotate it. Don't worry about the rotation of the front barrel because that can change still. The thing we need to do now is close this. Let me zoom you all the way. Oh yeah, you're all the way out. And put the bottom back in. still in place. Nice. As you can see, as I said, this is spring loaded and that's the tension for your trigger. Um, doesn't really matter in which order you do this. I'm gonna put the little one in there now so it doesn't fall out. We turn the rifle over. Get the larger one of the two. I put that one in the back. Let me hold it like this. So I don't drop it this time. in there nice now we put in the safety be sure the spring and the ball are back in there and to make sure you don't drop them I would say insert it from the bottom so rest your rifle grab this piece and make sure the ball and spring are in there 
slide them on from the bottom and grab your little screw and then turn it in there let me quickly hold the pressure and grab a screwdriver Now the reason you want to do this like this is so that the ball doesn't roll out because if you do this horizontally um, it will roll out really easily of course. Now that these screws just a little bit in you hold pressure. I'm gonna grab the bayonet because that's a better screwdriver. And it just looks cool, let's be honest. When the screw is in, turn it all the way and then a little back because otherwise it's going to be hard to lift the bolt upwards. If this moves smoothly, now we're good, now we're good in business. Now we put in some of the line, final pieces like that. This one simply push it through and then get our little ring. Get that on there. Mm -hmm. Then we get one of our hex screws again, put them in one of the holes, give it a little push on the side. So now it's in there nice and tight. Now we still need to fix the front. Make sure our rings are positioned correctly, so with the grip screws to the bottom, grab a the cover plate with the wider part on the back, and then slide the rings on once again. And one needs to go all the way to the back. And the other just to that first metal catch. Chunk. Turn the rifle around once again. Get our cleaning rod. Slide it back in there. A one and a half millimeter hex key. Make sure the grip screw is above the cleaning rod, so it holds the cleaning rod in place and um, it also makes sure when you tighten it that it scratches the metal of the cleaning rod instead of the wooden soft body of the Mosin because it's quite a soft wood that they used and you can easily overturn the screw and just go make a hole in it. You don't want to do that. So definitely tighten when it's over the cleaning rod. Just finger tight will do. Now there you have your Mosin in its full glory. All working again nicely. So yeah, that's how you disassemble and reassemble your Mosin again from uh, PPS and SHS, so that's the brand of this. Um, SHS is known for making upgrades for SL replicas and PPS is the maker of this uh, replica itself. So the internals are pretty alright when it comes to the spring and the bolt, it's just that the magazine is weak as, you, as I've explained in the video. But yeah, this is how you fix that temporarily if it jams on you. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this and this will be helpful to you when you uh, have either problems with your own replica or need to disassemble it anyway.